I want you to look at some of these pictures. These are the highest paid and most famous athletes. And as you look at them, I want you to try to name as many as you can. And also think of just some, some other ones that you know of. Maybe they play for your favorite team or, or you have their jersey, anything like that. So I'd like you to look at these pictures for a moment. Now many of these photos are iconic times in sports history, the people like Muhammad Ali, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, many people that, that we know that we recognize their name or recognize their face from the TV or other things. But now I want you to look at these people. I want you to try and name as many as you can. Maybe some of them you've seen before in a textbook or, or some other place, but I, I want to see how many you, you guys can name. Now, I want to say very few, if any of you, can name all of these people and very less name what, what they're known for. Even though many of these people are, have influenced your life much more than any of these sports stars have. These people I just showed are responsible for inventing things like the television, creating masterpieces, writing books, or, or helping many, many people. This is a, a great... A, an unbelievable difference uh, between the two and something that I think is very important. Sports stars, they get paid insane amounts of money to play a game that's barbaric and life-threatening. It's a dangerous thing and a very serious thing and many of them suffer injuries. There are very few sports stars that have gone their whole career without any injury whatsoever and many times these injuries are serious life-threatening injuries that have um, side effects of years and years, maybe even a whole lifetime. These are some of the traumatic injuries, but sometimes we don't think about or the players don't think about the, the long-term effects of what they're doing. In recent years, studies have came out studying the something that's called CTE or chronic traumatic encephalopathy. This is something that has been studied recently and um, these are, are pictures of football players' brains years after they're done playing. As you can see, the difference between a normal brain and a brain with the CTE, um, the, the CTE brain has large divots increases that can cause mental illness or mental defects later in life and come from tr being uh, multiple traumatic events without seeking help or just sustained traumatic events from things like crashing into to each other or getting your head hit um, by a boxing glove. Many of these players don't realize these effects and what they can do to their bodies. and They risk life and limb and, and we support that. We cheer and yell and scream for them to do something that's potentially life ending every single day. Another thing that has caused a real issue is the stereotypes that come with these sports players. In media today, we see jocks and cheerleaders portrayed as bullies. Oftentimes they're, they're hurting other people or promoting lifestyles that we wouldn't want for any of our, our younger generations. This is a big problem because many of these young people idolize these sports stars and often want to be them. They wear their jerseys, they have their posters on their wall, and maybe some of you guys do too. But this promotes a lot of bad stereotypes and things that, that have hurt and changed the lives of many other people. Next thing I want to mention is the insane amounts of money that we pay these athletes to crash into each other or throw a ball. Everyone is capable of doing at least some sort of acti physical activity. Some of us may do it more than others, but I can throw a ball, maybe not as far as some of these people, but you're definitely not going to be pay me for it. So why do we pay these people insane amounts of money who flaunt it and do crazy things, buy insane things with it when we could be giving that money to people who really need it. People who are starving, who need health care, who need food and water, their necessities. Or even people who live like this, that, that have to collect their water every day, who need a roof over their head or even chairs in their schools. Even though we have uh, millions of people every year, nine million, um, according to according to the American Red Cross that, that die every year of starvation. We're giving all of this money to, to people who really just like to live a lavish lifestyle and, 
lifestyle and spend it on whatever they want. If we take the top 10 highest paid athletes of 2019 and just take their year's earnings, it's going to be a little over $6.2 billion, according to Forbes. And with that $6.2 million, we could feed nearly 20 million families for a month. That That is a insane number, and it's almost unfathomable how much money that truly is and how much good we could do. The American Red Cross reports that last year they raised in fundraising around $21 million. With that money, they were able to provide health care and support to people in natural disasters. But that $21 million isn't even half of a percent of, of what that $6.2 billion is. And with just a portion of that money, how much more good they could they have done in this world? Most of these athletes, especially college athletes, some high school athletes as well, they're all living and training, devoting hundreds, of, if not thousands of hours to this day. This is draft day, and for many different um, organizations, it's one of the biggest days of the year. It's where we see new stars and new faces come into the, the major leagues. But according to the NCAA, um, only around 2% of these college athletes actually make it into the major leagues. That's 98% of people that are risking life and limb um, to play a game. And really, uh, those odds, 98% of people not making it in, those odds are, are not something that many people would bet against. But yet we see hundreds and thousands of players going into um, college sports and, and spending their time and dedicating this time to, to train and to work towards, towards this goal. UCLA, former UCLA player Josh Rosen did an interview with um, NBC and in that he said football and school just don't go together. They just don't. Later the reporter doing that interview wrote about how much of a strain it puts on these athletes to also be expected to get good grades and do well in school when many of them don't even have time to attend their classes and might have tutors hired or other people hired to try to boost their grades to keep them in school. In other words, many of these athletes are giving up a higher education and a great education um, in order to pursue a very small, the very small chance that, that they'll make it into to the major leagues. Now, I don't want you to get the idea that I think exercise is a bad thing. Exercise is great and we should all be getting as much time as we can outdoors and, and we really should be promoting this healthy lifestyle. We see all the time kids playing and in the streets and that's a great thing but as adults we can play as well we can we can instead of sitting down in front of a tv or paying to go to a sporting event we can hold our own we can play our own our own game and and have our own active lifestyle